Russ, I do not know if you are as excited as I am to roll out this podcast, but this is all about financial freedom. This is the story of a husband and wife and how financial freedom feels. I mean, I'm just, I got goosebumps. It is it's really great. I think you're going to enjoy as you listen to the story of Sid Christensen and his wife, Shalise. They talk about the journey of going from being just a typical working family, working hard, having two kids, wanting the best for their family, and the, what the best initially looked like was hard work, right? We'll maybe make enough money to where our kids can have the things, the luxuries of of life, right? Better clothes, better houses, whatever that looks like. And what has transpired over the last roughly two and a half years is that now they see the world from a perspective of financial freedom is being able to stay on a vacation longer. It's being able to homeschool if I want to homeschool. It's being able to leave a job because that's just not the most important thing to me. Or as in Sid's situation, still working in a family business, I'm just going to work because I want to, but I know I don't have to. Because I enjoy it. Like, have you ever stopped to think what that would feel like? Mm. Or is it just like a, a something that you could not even fathom to enjoy what you're going to work for today? If that- you are looking for how can you apply this podcast, I'm going to call you to action. If you're a person who is a self-starter, you love to follow a process, you need a flow to go through, we've built it for you. It's called wealthwhitewallstreet.com forward slash passport. It is a step-by-step process of basically what Sid and Shalise has done, where they got real clear of what their goals were so that they could actually set up an action plan and create a strategy and figure out how to implement it. Now, if you're one that is I need a kind of a, a wingman. I need someone to to help guide me through this part. I like to go fast, but I'm not someone that's going to watch a bunch of videos. Go to wealthwhitewallstreet.com forward slash free call, and our coaches can help you as long as you know how much passive income you need to be financially free, meaning how much monthly expenses do you have? What is need to come in so that you can not have to go to active work if you don't want to? They can give you some tools and point you in the direction to so you can know who you are as an investor and they can help you start building that strategy and implement as well. One of those two pathways can get you to what you're about to listen to. But I want you to listen to this interview because if, as Joey said, this is definitely inspirational. It's one of those things that we love to hear our existing community members sharing how they were able to leave jobs and spend more time doing the things they want with the people that they want. So let's jump into this interview right now with Sid and Shalise Christensen. Welcome to the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast, your guide to understanding how to get out of the Wall Street rat race and start your own mailbox money lifestyle. Now, don't let these handsome Southern draws fool you. These financial minds are teaching our country to enhance savings, increase cash flow, and create passive income, all without the help of Wall Street. Are you ready to break through? Now here are your hosts, Russ Morgan and Joey Murray. Welcome into the show. Guys, we are in for a huge treat today. We have Sid Christensen back on the show, but it's been enhanced. He brought his better half, Shalise, with him. Guys, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. Thank you. It's awesome (laughs) to be here. Well, this has been our year of kind of doing updates. You know, we we were able to highlight Sid, I guess it was in April of 2020, and there was a a lot of really cool parts to his story of where he went from having a snowmobile accident to having this revelation he needed to create income to then going (laughs) down the crazy road of land flipping. And Shalise, I know you were sitting there probably watching all of this happening So I would love, before we get into some of the updates, the things that he's done since we last talked, when he started talking about doing land flipping, buying and selling raw land, what was your initial thought process to that? (laughs) Um, He's always been a busybody, and (laughs) it was... 
in my mind, he's like, Shalise, look at this. I want you to see what you think. He opened up the Land Geek and he showed me their first little like training thing. And he wanted, he showed me like what it was and what it was all about. And he's like, what do you think? And I was like, um, yeah, like whatever you think, I think that's great. And in my mind, I was like, okay, this is going to be another thing that blows over. (laughs) (laughs) What what you were singing is, I don't think it's going to work. I think it's another idea. And let's just give it 30 days. Sounds great, honey. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Bless his heart. But (laughs) we we had been married for, what was it? Like five years. And he had gone through a couple other um, things like he'd gone to a technical college and tried to get his certificate in land surveying and then robotics. And so I just, it was just like another thing to keep him busy. And I, he needed that because I already had two kids and I, he needed to busy himself. So I didn't have to take care of him too. So, but it was kind of, <laughs> so yeah, is that enough? No, that was great. I love that. I, I thought we were going to make fun of Joey. Now it's just, it just seems like she's decided to take that towards yes. Seth. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. He can take it. He can take it. So basically what I'm hearing you say is that initially you thought it was just an idea and it was uh, maybe something that was going to blow her. At what point or how long into the process did you go, wait a second, this isn't just an idea. This is something he's dead serious about. Well, after we paid for flight school, <laughs> that was which is like seven grand, and then he went through that, and we bought our first property, and then he wanted to go to boot camp, yeah. and then he ended up wanting to do the coaching, which is a hefty sum of money, and yes. we had I had seen him put in the work and the time, and just his diligence in putting, you know, waking up at four o'clock every morning, and I was like, he's serious about this, and we had seen like land we were seeing progress we were seeing success mm. so i was like okay well let's just keep going <laughs> so so Sid, when like for you and i don't know if we really got into this cuz i don't know if we knew some of the backstory our wives are great at pointing out the things that we have not done in the past <laughs> <laughs> right i mean this let's just be honest but the there was obviously a point in your life too, or in that, in that process to you, where you said, this is different than some of the other things that I have thought about doing because I, you are waking up at 4am. You are spending large amount of money to do the, the coaching and everything along with that. Where, what was that trigger point for you? When did you know that this was the thing that you were meant to be doing? Hmm, That's a hard question because I don't know. I, I've tried different things and it's just kind of, it's almost been too good to be true. And then this thing, the land, it's a lot of work to learn and do. And it felt more realistic because it was harder to do instead of, and we've had a few things. I think my brother, he had like a, a patent that we bought and <laughs> just never went anywhere. And we thought, well, where's all our money? <laughs> we just thought it would just, we have this patent. People are just going to be starting to pay money for it. And it was not the case. It's a lot, a lot more work to do. And anyway, the land business, it, it seemed to have that. And um, I could see we've had a little bit of success and that, that just gave me motivation to keep going and seeing what else we could do. So I think it's just step by step, but it seemed more realistic um, than, I don't know, just something that just happens, I guess. Gotcha. Well, so let's let's kind of catch people up if they missed the very first episode. First of all, go back and listen to it, um, one from April 2020. But second of all, you at the time you were really just almost like a year into the process, if I'm if I'm saying that correctly, and you had sold uh, or bought about 45 properties and sold about 37. Like, give people an idea where you're at today, or how many have you have you seen come and go since then, or total. Yeah. So we've, we, for right now we've, we've sold 125 properties and I would say 25 of those have been cash and like a hundred would be notes. We have about a hundred notes now. And let's see, we have a few other, we have about 10 in inventory right now. So that's, so 135 total properties and we've sold one, 125 of them. 
Oh, that's amazing. Now, at the time we were talking about what it would be like that, you know, the purpose behind this passive income stream was going to buy back essentially Shalise's time as a nurse so that she could be more present and more full time with your family. It was as it was growing, you had that new baby girl at the time. So talk about what that has been like since then. And, um, and maybe, you know, maybe Shalise, you could jump in here as to how that has transformed your family. So since we spoke last, I, so April, 2020, I was working six days a month. Um, and so really not too bad. Um, but I did work night shift. And so it was, you know, two or three days to like, finally get back to feeling like a normal mom instead of a zombie mom. And (laughs) Sid loves numbers and loves looking at numbers and loves to set goals for himself and for our family. And he just was like, at this certain point, then we'll be able to, you know, have you home full time. And come January of 2021, I put in my two weeks and since, well, I guess it was a little bit before. Um, So January 9th was my last shift as a NICU nurse um, at the hospital and I loved it, um, but being home and being present for my babies is more important for me um, at this point in my life. And if that changes later on down the road, then so be it. But right now, I'm grateful for the land business and for this passive income and that it's just given us more time to be together as a family because that is our whole goal is just to hang out and be together. and. Mm. That's so good. So, Sid, from a number standpoint, you had told us that at the time, the notes that you were bringing in, I don't remember the number. So you just said you had 100 notes. Now, I knew that you said you had done some on terms, some um, on wholesale and cash before. So maybe it was somewhere in the mid 20s that you had notes and it was bringing in roughly about three thousand dollars a month. Where are you at today? So yeah, there, I think it was 3,000 to 3,500. I can't remember, but we have grown a lot. We're, we're hovering around the 15,000 a month. Wow. Now. So That's it's like so cool. exploded. <laughs> it, and just from a person who is looking at the land flipping business, right. And they, and they see this growth. Is it just exponential? Is the curve just pretty much up and to the right? And it just, time just continues to allow it to keep ex- growing or were there things along the way that helped you like hockey stick it? Um, I think you just get better at it. Um, I've landed in an area. I would say we are an expert at that area and we just, we just know what we can buy and sell properties for. And that just comes with the experience. And then your confidence level goes up. Cause I remember before or just in the, in the starting s- stages of this, I would be nervous about buying certain properties and not really knowing like what I'm buying. But now like I get excited and she can, she could attest to this. Like I'd be like, look at this property, look how much we could buy it for. And I get so excited because I know, I know what we can sell it for. And um, anyway, so I'm, I'm more confident in buying it. And um, so you just kind of, maybe you got to pay a little bit more, but I just, I know my numbers and um I just, I have set goals. I'm trying to hit like so many prop. I try and buy four properties a month, try and sell four properties a month. And then with that projected, it just keeps going to where our goal is. So that's like the minimum, but we're doing more than that now. Well, and, and here's the thing. I, I think people hear that success and it is super attractive. Like every, who, who doesn't want 15,000 a month of passive income, right? But I think what is really interesting to me, and I'm so grateful to have you both on the show at the same time, because to have two different perspectives about what that actually means is is super valuable. So Shalise talked a little bit about what it has felt like and meant for her to be able to be home and be able to be present. I, she used that word very clearly, present, to be there in in. I, I hear invest, right? Invest in your family because it is an active role that you're taking by being present and doing that. Sid, for you, 
how would you explain what it means to you to have this passive income? I think um, as being a provider for the family, it is very relieving to know that we've got our expenses pretty much taken care of. Um, of that 15000 we obviously put some back in the land and two expenses for the business, but that's enough for us to live comfortably now. And I still work for my dad and our, our family business, and I'm still trying to figure out what to do with that because we do construction, and I like that, and I like working with my dad, but some days I just want to <laughs> – I want to just not <laughs> go to work. So it's kind of, I'm trying to figure that out. Um, but it's- Here, before you finish that thought, I, I, I want to point that out because that that is a great point there that you just made is that I get to work with my dad. There's a win there. There's obviously some frustration that goes along with all of that, right? I mean, work in general, maybe sometimes families, we all can get on each other's nerve. But I, what I love what you are really getting to and pointing out there is that you don't have to, right? You're not using the word, well, I have to go work with my dad or I have to go do this job. I, I don't, it, as you listen to this, hear what Sid and Shalice are saying is that the they are afforded the opportunity to do these things and they will choose to do them until they don't want to do them anymore because <laughs> they don't have to do them. Yeah, yeah. And it, just having that, it means a, a ton. Just have that security and um, knowing that we're able to work and provide our own income. Um, it's, it was kind of like giving myself a raise um, because I know I, I, we worked and worked and worked, or I worked and worked and worked, and the raises were just kind of incremental. But this is a big raise, and it's something that we, we did, like big, and it's provided that passive income and a little bit more freedom in our life. and. Um, you guys know families take a lot of time. It's like well, time I do want to know though. Did Shalice did this give him a couple more ideas in the bag because this one's worked out so well? Like you'll give him some passes on new ones that come up or what? Well, he really wants to try that short term rental. <laughs> deal yes. that you guys are always talking about. <laughs> so he's he's I don't know. We'll see. Not right now, but eventually. I'm, I'm <laughs> sure we'll get into the short-term rentals because you guys are yeah. so good at convincing people to do stuff like that. <laughs> oh, well, so so back up another second, Sid. So you mentioned it's afforded more freedom for you, for your family. Um, what about like as far as other things that you've been able to do as a family as a result of this that maybe you wouldn't have done had you not had this passive income? Um, we've definitely gone on more trips. We, we bought a camper. We bought a camper. So in our All right. Hey, that's a whole nother podcast. <laughs> yeah. so you, and I, you and I jumping on talking about camper woes and, uh, and wins. So, <laughs> yeah, so it's, that one's been fun. It's kind of been a learning curve, just how to operate the thing. Um, it's a little different than just operating your house. So anyway, it's, it's the been awesome, fun. Yeah. The awesome thing about it is, we get to go on vacation and we don't have to worry. Like when I would, when we would plan vacations, we would be like, okay, we have to do it this time. I have to schedule myself out these days. And then when we get back, I have to hurry and go in and do my night shift and be exhausted for the next couple of days. And that has just like, sometimes we're like, well, I guess we could just stay another night if we wanted to, cause we don't really need to get <laughs> back to anything. So that's been the thing that has been just, amazing just a blessing that's a game changer um for sure now i i you may not have gotten here and so you can totally tell me no but how has this changed anything in the way you think about what you're going to pass on to your your boys and your your girl at this point your your future generations in the way of them making a life for themselves and being able to provide for their you know generational wealth and knowledge? I've thought about it. I don't know if you've thought about it. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> kind of. I've thought about it. I think the the biggest thing to pass on is the knowledge, um, just the mindset shift uh, away from Wall Street and just uh, becoming a saver and paying yourself first, having that opportunity to fund. 
and seek to have passive income and not retirement. Retirement is a joke. It doesn't work. Um, the passive income is the way to do it. And that's the mindset I want to teach our kids and have them try and do things and, and probably fail at things because I think it's important to let them fail, uh, just like we did. We've had a few failures in, in our life. So <laughs> when it comes to invest investments, and it's uh, it's been a learning experience every time. So I think that's good for them to, to learn and fail and grow like that. But I want to have that mindset in, in, um, learned. Well, what I... You used the word that I would love for you to replace with failure. You used it multiple times along the way, and it was learn. Mm. Right? there. There's wins and there's learns. There's not wins and losses. There's wins and learns. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Every time that we learn something, right, it allows us to not make that mistake again, and it allows those around us not to make that mistake if we do what? If we share it. If we if we give that information away and that's what you're doing right now with others, right? Every time that we get on this podcast, we love sharing wins, but we also love sharing lessons learned because those are the things that help others around us not have to learn the full lesson. We say that you can either pay retail for it or you can borrow it. <laughs> and <laughs> we would love to borrow that information, we borrow those lessons from someone else. So we don't have to learn that ourselves. This podcast is amazing, almost too amazing, Russ. There's too many ideas, and I don't know where to get started creating passive income. Well, here's the thing, Joey. I think one of the things you need to consider in that statement is what is it costing you to not know? What is it costing you not to take action? I love the statement that says you don't have to be great to start. You just have to start to be great. If you're struggling on where to start, you have to know what type of investor you are. Know your investor DNA. And if you want to learn more about this, you can join us in our Passport Challenge at wealthwithoutwallstreet.com forward slash Passport. Get started today. I, I want to go back to just a couple of updates. The last time we talked, we were asking about the land business. And this is a question that commonly comes up is, OK, but it's not all, you know, beautiful rainbows and unicorns minus 100 <laughs> unicorns on Joey's end. Come on. It's, not, it's not always success stories, right? There are things that don't go right. And then usually the question is, well, what happens if I don't sell the property? And I think you've done pretty good in saying, hey, we've bought 135 and we've sold 125. We're doing pretty good in that area. Yeah. The last time you we were together, I said, well, what's the worst thing that's happened? And you said, well, we bought a property from someone uh, wholesale. We turned around and sold it. And later on, they called us back and said, you know, that property I sold you. Actually, I just realized I had sold it on terms to someone else. That was the worst thing. <laughs> <laughs> since, since that, over the last roughly 18 months, what has been the worst thing that's happened in the land business that you, and, and you may have multiple stories you want to share. I'd love to hear it. Yeah, I think we have two. Do you want to share the Arizona one? Um, so, you know, good enough. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. I could probably like sell land now because I hear him talk about it so much. <laughs> so we bought this property and we sold it to this guy. It's um, our first property. Oh, our we first. Ever brought, yeah. Bought. So our first property that we ever bought and, um, this guy, he paid for it with cash. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the contract says, as you know, sold as is done deal. Um, we signed the deed, he signed it. And then like a month later or a couple of months later. Yeah. So he was on terms for a little bit and then he wanted to pay it off in cash. He did. And then a few months later he gives him, gives us a call. He <laughs> calls us and was like, Hey, I'm so mad at you guys. This is at a flood zone. Blah, 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 blah. I can't build on it. You need to give me my money back. And so instead of like, Cause we could have just been like, no, like the deal's done. We're done with you. He was, we just, we knew from how he was acting that he was just going to be a thorn in our side. So we decided to refund him his money, which was a pain in the butt because then he had to sign the deed and send it back to us. And then we had to send him the money. But then like what a couple of weeks later, a month later, we sold it for more than what we sold it to him for. So <laughs> it, it was, it was better. It was a, it was better all around to sell it to somebody else and they love it. Like it is just exactly what they wanted. Floats on and off. Yeah. Oh, it worked so cool. out. <laughs> now you, you, you said you had two, what, what's the other one you want to share? Yeah. So this recent, 
we it's just a funny it's not really that big of a headache it's just just goes to show that there's some crazy people out there <laughs> <laughs> that want this land and anyway there's this guy he's from seattle and he's wanting some land and um it's his desert land that he's purchasing and so he gets so excited i we sell him the desert land he's like i'm going down there next week to look at it i'm like great here's the map here's the gps coordinates this is you know how you get to it and i sent him all the the information to how to find it and so he's like all right i'm gonna go down there and we also i also said like this is not a you know city slicker property this is you know out in the desert dirt road so bring a high clearance vehicle He's like, oh, I'm not a city slicker. Well, I live in the city, but I'm not a city slicker. Like, okay, <laughs> great. He's not not a Russ Morgan. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he goes down there, and I think we were actually on vacation and um, at a cell phone service, oh, yeah. luckily. Oh, my lake or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, I get back, and my phone's, like, buzzing. and I have all these text messages and uh, voicemails, and he is call- he's is he been calling me and texting me furious about the property because of the dirt road conditions were a little rougher than what he could handle, and the property had uh, fire ants on it, it had snakes, and what are called, scorpions? scorpions all the things that you should be able to find in a desert <laughs> and he was so mad that i didn't tell him that there's fire ants on his property and fire was, ants <laughs> well i mean it's the desert i like i asked him like what do you know what you bought i mean this is a desert right right <laughs> and um, like, anyway he just and then he was so mad because he wanted me to pay for all his emotional damages <laughs> That. No. A unit of damages? Seven hundred seven hundred dollars. Yeah. <laughs> how how did he did he have to go back to Seattle and sit with a therapist for, for an hour and a half or what happened? I didn't I didn't ask him that. I just <laughs> told him no. <laughs> and by, I, by I, way, I refunded him his money and I told him goodbye, but it's just like holy cow, there's some crazy people out there. No. So it wasn't really that bad. I you know gave him his money back and yeah, sent him on his way, but he was he was irate. I never seen someone so mad about land and so I don't know disconnected with reality. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure his his Volvo XC90 didn't handle the dirt road very well, no, and he was yeah. Just... yeah he had to go fix it apparently or something. <laughs> I don't know. By the way, how how little do you value your emotions if the punitive damages are only seven hundred bucks? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Let's let's be honest. Mine is going to be in the thousands at least. Yeah. Oh man, I'm working on punitive damages for uh, being uh, my family being locked up in a in a hotel in Hawaii. And I promise you, I'm not I'm not uh, rooting for or trying to get seven hundred bucks. <laughs> By the way, did he, was he mad that there was there was cactus on his land, <laughs> like there cacti? Cactus and, yeah. Yeah. Brush, you know, all yeah. the wow. yeah. He was probably mad that there wasn't more trees. I mean, lack of yeah. rain. Uh, well, had pictures. Like, I don't know what he was thinking. I, he had, he had the, I had pictures of actual photos of this property. And there was a, a cedar tree. So there's a little shade on the corner. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> that was all it. Right. So I don't know if he was expecting like this oasis of, I don't know, pine trees and waterfall, lake. I, <laughs> I don't know. All right, Pretend so I have a, a lot, I guess. <laughs> I have another question. So last time we were talking, it was about it was taking you about ten to maybe fifteen hours a week to run the business, and you were getting up at four a.m. and all these things. Um, tell us how does it? How much time does it take to run the business now? So yeah, I wake up at five a.m. So I sleep in a little bit. Now. Oh man, <laughs> really enjoying that passing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an early riser anyway, so it's just you got to get the worm in the morning. That's right. Um, but I spend about an hour to maybe an hour and a half, just depending on you know the work that I have to do uh, every morning. And then Fridays I do spend about four to five hours on the business. And Shalise, she helps me. She does like the ad copy. She makes landing pages and posts ads. And I go get the mail. She goes and gets the mail. 
close the bank. That, hey, that that mail is no joke. Like when you're sur- return to center, return to center, return yeah. to center. <laughs> yeah. yeah. For real. I, I, I mean, I'm feeling like maybe she's giving you the seven hundred dollar emotional distress for just yeah. picking yeah. up the mail. <laughs> I should start charging. Yeah. <laughs> so how is that working together as a team? I know there's husbands and wives that are that do this business together, but there's some that are like, well. I'd be interested, would my husband or would my wife be able to to work in the business with me? How do you guys divide roles? How do you do it to where it's successful, where you don't get on each other's nerves? Talk a little bit about that. I think that'd be interesting to hear. Go ahead. <laughs> he just tells me what to do, and I just make sure that the kids like stay out of the way and that he's fed. Like yes. Those are my roles. Mm. <laughs> and, <laughs> but Critical. like I don't know. I just... I try to do the, like he has little tasks on Parsha Street that I um, do and then yeah, just make sure, you know. I'd say she does the, the stuff that I, the grunt work. Yeah. I hate doing and I, mean, and I don't mind it. It's yeah. like, I'm good with that. Yeah. So we do have VAs working for us. Um, so the stuff that I give her is just more uh, just to do on our end uh, of things. But, and sometimes, and, and I think giving the VA this stuff, I mean, obviously you can't have them go get the mail and stuff. So some of the stuff that we have to do, I, I give her and I just don't like doing it. I don't like going to the mail and, um, I don't know, dealing with ad copy and stuff like that. So she does the kind of the grunt work. I really like to sell land and she doesn't, you don't really like to be on the phone, do you? I could probably do it though. She could do it now. If she wanted. She's like, she's like, watch yeah. out, Sid. Um, I could, I could do circles around you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, we so have, the best thing though for selling land is to make sure you have a kid screaming in the background. <laughs> Something happening in the background. It's like, oh, you have kids. I want to buy land. <laughs> I've heard that. I, you're not the first person who said that. Like people said, the best thing that ever happens when my kids start talking or getting in the backdrop and people hear them, they're like, "Oh, this person must be at least trustworthy enough to be around kids, right?" You know. <laughs> yeah. so that, that, it makes that you means, feel it like you have some. I don't know. They can relate to validity you or like, yeah. like, oh, this, you know. Yeah, I mean, because yeah. most most scammers don't have kids. I mean, who in the world yeah, would have kids if they, if, if they weren't trustworthy, right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Man, that, this is just a show to have more kids. Is what I'm at. What I'm yeah. at. <laughs> yeah. First step: have a kid. All right. So, so speaking of the future, let, let's let's talk about vision. I, I would love to hear. Where so when you first started this, it was like okay, this would be a great way to maybe create some passive income. Maybe Shalise could you know pare down the amount of hours she's having to go to the hospital, and then it's grown to where it's like oh well, this is something that gives us freedom to go RVing, to be able to stay an extra couple of days. Shalise no longer has to go to the work, and she stays home full time with the kids. Where do you see it going from here? That's that's something I'm still trying to figure out because. Honestly, it happened faster than I anticipated to have this much, you know, passive income, this much success. So originally I was just like, oh, it'd be great to quit my job, you know, and then I got you know, like, well, what am, what else am I going to do? Because you got to fill that time with something. And, um, you know, I do like doing construction, being busy and outside and, and all that. Um, office work is, I don't want to be able to, I, I can't do it. All day, um, even the five hours on Fridays, it's hard. I, I wander around the house and find things to do. <laughs> I had to start taking care of him. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm still trying to figure out what to do with that. I think um, having the time to raise our our two little boys and our little girl is um, one of our, our focuses now, to really have the time to spend with them um, and show them love. Because I think if you have time to spend with them, that that's sh- like that's really love for them and that will help them in the future. Uh, not just, uh, um, with financial freedom, but everything, every aspect of life. I mean, this world is, is nuts. Just all the things that are happening. And, um, I was also thinking maybe we could do homeschool, but I don't know how, 
Shalice knows about that. I know you guys do it. But. Shalice is like, really, we should have talked about this off the air. Off limits. Yeah. Off limits. <laughs> no, well, and since I, since I stopped working, honestly, my oldest, um, he's like a cut, paste, and copy of Sid. Just busy as I'll get out. Um, my mom even mentioned like after I quit and I hadn't been working, she just mentioned how much better, um, Braxton is acting and just like, just knowing that I'm actually making an influence and that he actually, I don't know, just acts better now that I'm around full time, I'm present full time instead of, you know, cause I was working night shift. So it's not like I was gone for that many hours of their life. Um, but those morning times where I was exhausted and I would just, you know, screen time or not be, um, interacting with them. Um, we've just seen a huge shift in, in his personality, which has been just life changing. All of, all of that is what makes this worth it. Right. I mean, just the the time that you have, we'll never say, man, I wish I would have gotten a nicer RV or I wish I would have been able to go on two more trips it's always going to be thinking of how could I have invested in my kids? How could I invest in, in the people around me that I love and, and do meaningful work? And that's what passive income gives you, right? It gives you the ability to be who God called us to be. And each one of us has been given gifts and talents that are different. But a lot of times we don't get a chance maybe to use those to our fullest because we're bogged down by the have to of creating mm-hmm. an income. And, that is so cool to hear your story. Thank you, Shalise, for coming on and, and sharing this with us. Sid, welcome back, Twofer. You did you did amazing again. <laughs> and I, I hope that you'll be willing to come back in a year or so. I want to hear what the future is. And if it is short-term rentals or whatever, and <laughs> that, that's just the life of entrepreneurship. We we tend to never be satisfied with one thing. But I will I will give you a piece of of information, not advice, but piece of information. And this for for all listening. Sometimes as entrepreneurs, our our gift is vision. Our gift is ideas and being able to pursue things really hard. But I think what you just said a second ago is that it's all worth it because of the time that you get to spend with your kids. And a, a curse of entrepreneurship and that vision of pursuing things super hard can be that we will pursue the next thing super hard and we will fill up the time that was given to us with something else. And I know that you guys are super family focused and I know that won't happen. But as, if, as you, if you're listening to this as through that same eye or through that same focus, maybe that will help you because I know that's been a an issue in my life that I have continued to pursue the next thing before I realized that I was eating up more time. And so now it's measured by how much time do I get? And if I, if I have extra and it's not eaten into my family time, I'll do it. Otherwise I say, regardless of how cool it could be, don't pursue it. Hmm. That's great advice. I think yeah, I love it. Just, hmm. I can see me, me doing that. I can see it. He settled <laughs> down a lot. Like within this last year, um, the business isn't taking him away more than, um, it's, it is truly giving us more freedom. Hmm. Well, and, and that's a great way to lead into this. Um, for those, if you're listening and you say, man, this is, this is something I want to pursue. First of all, I want to give you a call to action. And that's a literally a 15 minute call with one of our coaches. You can get there by wealth, go to wealthwithoutwallstreet.com forward slash free call. And you can find out maybe land flipping isn't the way that you're going to get there, but the result is what we're talking about. It's freedom. It's being present. It is knowing that the bills are paid so that you can stay the extra day or two uh, camping with your family and and investing in them. Um, As we wrap up, I would love for you guys. So Sid and Shalise, if you guys could say one thing to somebody who is on that precipice and they're saying, okay, I need to do this. Can't, should I do this? Am I, am I really made up to do this? I don't know. What would you say to that person? Go first. 
<laughs> well, I just think if Sid can do it, like anybody can do it. And that's, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, that is not a bash on my husband. I so much. But honestly, like he's as far out being techie as anybody. And for him to be able, like, you just have to have determination and, and just that, that drive. And that's, what I love so much about him is his drive and his determination. And if you've got even an ounce of that, like it's worth it. The hard work is worth it. And it's been, you know, a few, it seems like a few short years and, and just, it's, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. You definitely got to put in the time, but what I would say is um, don't give up. Uh, you, I mean, we've I, we've had our ups and downs in the land business. I, I remember being when we first started this. I was super stressed out, like m- wondering if I made the right decision, if this is going to work out. So yeah, I understand. We understand those feelings. Like it's a huge step of faith to do it. But if you don't take that step now, you probably never will, and you'll never change. So you got to make a change now. You got to take that first step. So it's going to be scary, but. If you don't do anything, nothing will change. So if you if you do fail or learn, you'll learn and you'll be better for it. But you gotta you gotta move your feet. You gotta act and and move forward. So I think that's the first thing you need to do. I love that. Well, thank you again, Sid. Thank you, Shalise, for being on the show. Thank you for listening to this podcast. And I hope you'll share this with someone who who needs some inspiration, who needs to to hear their story of how they were able to create freedom for their family and I hope that uh, you'll give us a, a rating and a review as you do that. And as always have an amazing day. This has been the wealth without wall street podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to the show to break free of the wall street mindset and begin building wealth on your own terms in places you understand so that your wealth will never run dry. See you next episode.